looking on YouTube at a bunch of different dial indicator videos, and each and every one of them is kind of specific to a, a certain trade or a task or a purpose. And uh, not one in particular really was suited for what we were hoping to do as far as uh, talking about measuring runout on rotors. There was one, and I might link to it later, just simply uh, talking about how to take measurements on rotors, but not necessarily how to set up the dial indicator or really what all of the lines and numbers and things like that really mean. Um, in our case, what we really need to understand about the dial indicator is what it's really measuring. So what I want you to see is that the arrow is pointing to the zero right now and this quill is fully extended making contact with the surface of the material. We're going to assume that this material down here is our rotor. So when we're talking about the dial indicator's readings, what we're looking at is really variation of our readings. So with a rotor, it doesn't matter where this line really is. Um, we're just setting it up to find the high and the low point. So let's say that the rotor is spinning and it has some run out. What's going to happen is this quill riding against the surface of a spinning rotor here is going to rise and fall. And it's going to indicate exactly how much change there is in the surface height relative to the fixed dial indicator. It's not moving, but the rotor as it spins has a the surface that is imperfect. So what happens is as we spin the rotor, the quill moves. We're hoping it's a small amount. Specifications usually are around like two thousandths of an inch or 0 0.002 inches. Um, anything more than that, like we move beyond that three thousandths, four thousandths, five thousandths, up to you know eight, ten thousandths, those are beyond specification. And it tells us that as long as the hub surface is clean and as long as the inside of the rotor is clean, that we have a warped rotor and it needs to be machined on a lathe or replaced if there's not enough material to actually do the machining. So let's talk about our dial indicator. <clears throat> We have this outer ring here. It is the most important for our purposes, but what we need to understand is each line in this dial indicator we see here is registered as 1,000. This little mark down here in the middle that says 0 0.00121 inch tells us the accuracy and the range of our dial indicator. What it's saying is each increment is 1,000th of an inch. Full stroke of the quill up and down is one whole inch. So it gets a little bit confusing because there's two dials. What we need to understand is that this can only count all the way up to one tenth of an inch or one hundred thousandths, point one zero zero inches. So as this outer dial makes several rounds, it starts adding them up here. When we're done actually making our measurement, this would indicate one tenth of an inch or point one zero zero two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, and then within each of those tenths, we see the exact measurement on the dial. So in this example, this digital one that I can share with you, it really only goes up beyond one tenth a little ways. So we'll, I'll show you exactly what happens. So let's assume that we're working with a surface that's very, um, how should we say, very warped, and it's going to be beyond one tenth of an inch. So if I grab the quill and I begin making it lift, like the surface is imperfect on a very warped rotor, we start approaching that tenth and we go beyond it. Now, as you can see here, small gauge is pointing at one, one tenth of an inch, that should say. And so beyond that, we're sitting here and we're at one tenth plus one extra thousandth or beyond. We can go to, uh, well, that's pretty much our limit there, it would be 0.114, which is basically saying 114 thousandths of an inch of runout. Now, that's obviously way beyond, but we need to understand what the gauges mean. So if we zero this back out, there's another detail that we run into. A lot of times, what we have to do with our dial indicator is simply move our quill halfway up because what we need is the ability to measure variation both downward and upward. So a lot of times we'll set it up here and this will be in contact with this surface and then as the rotor turns we get slight variations here and here. Now this picture doesn't illustrate it very well but you can actually grab this outer ring and turn it. This allows you to zero 
the gauge. So let's say we've attached our dial indicator to the um, flexible arm, we've locked it all down, it's fixed, and we've got it plunged halfway through the stroke on our dial indicator. This is really the crux of what I need you guys to understand, is that we need to have this compressed right around halfway. And then that way, any uh, positive values go up and any negative values go down. And what we're looking for is a variation. So as the rotor spins, we would see the gauge do something like this. It's gonna go up in value and then it's gonna go down in value. And what we're measuring is the variation. As the rotor makes one full revolution, you'll see it swing up and then down. And then whatever our lowest value is, let's assume it's right here, that's where we're stopping, okay? We find the low point of our rotor as it's spinning. And then what we do is we take our outside of our gauge and we zero it. So we move the zero all the way down to the indicator. Once it's at the indicator, any sort of value that is going up, because we found the low point, is registered as a positive value. So that might seem a little bit, uh, I guess, difficult. You could just count how many lines there are, but this makes it an easy, quick, and um, quickly read number. As the rotor moves, it's gonna go up to a high point, and then it's gonna come back down to our low point. High point, roughly the same spot, and then low point. So as, as we confirm that the high point is relatively consistent right about here, then we would measure that as our actual runout. This is about 22 thousandths worth of runout. And it's easy because it labels it. It says 0, 10, 20, 21, 22. And this would just be simply indicated as 0 0.022 inches of runout. We would then use all data or some other type of uh, specification. If you're using a um, home workshop manual, there should be specifications in there as well. Um, something like a Chilton's or a climber manual. And those would then tell you what the limits are. And if you're beyond that limit of usually, like I said before, two thousandths of an inch, then it needs to be machined or replaced. A lot of times if you're doing this stuff at home, it doesn't make a lot of sense to pay somebody to machine it because you're paying somebody their time and uh, could easily be just buying another rotor. Um, sometimes though, especially if you just bought the rotors, and um, you know you let somebody drive your car and they drove it too fast and got on the brakes and warped your rotors or uh, a similar situation to that it would make sense to machine them because you've already made the investment um, a lot of times dealers will have you use dial indicators to measure the before and after run out of a car as you're doing a brake job um, a lot of times Dealers are really concerned about this stuff because, I mean, brake pulsation is one of the things that customers are most aware of. They step on the brake, things start shaking, and they don't like it. I mean, I don't like it either, but um, what you run into is a situation where they need to make sure that the brake job was done right. Using the dial indicator basically verifies that the before was excessive and the after, after you've either machined or replaced the rotors, is within specification and you shouldn't have any sort of uh, concerns anymore with brake pulsation or any sort of rotor run out. So the main point of this whole thing is to identify areas where you might have pulsation with a car and then verifying after the fact that after we've zeroed the rotor that we have a situation where we're only measuring like 1,000, oh, too much. We're measuring between zero and one thousandth or two thousandths of actual rotor runout. If I could actually get this thing to line up, that would be great. So essentially the takeaways here, when measuring one of these, you have to keep in mind that each of the lines on the outside is one thousandth. I believe our snap-on at school actually is measured at five ten thousandths or half a thousandth each but there's high marks and low marks um, the high marks are the thousandths and the low marks are the half thousandths if you will or the five ten thousandths and it lets us be able to um, document a little bit more accurately what's going on there um, it still has this type of dial here that counts in the tenths range but as you can see you go 90 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, and it should indicate one-tenth here as it makes full revolutions. Um, 
our main concern really is going to boil down to a few thousands on rotors and maybe up to 20 thousands run out on really excessively warped rotors. So just seeing this, I think I am going to link to another video that actually shows it in use because this is really how to use it for measuring purposes, not so much setting it up. So I will include another video to uh, instruct how it's set up and they also show an actual measurement. So um, what I do want to show you guys real quick, though, is a couple of examples of a uh, dial indicator reading. So we're just going to randomly place this here. And what we have is we, we know that we're at about 30, 1, 2, 3, 33 thousandths, and our line has not surpassed the 1 here, so we're less than 1 tenth. So our reading is simply 33 thousandths. It's a much more simple system to read than, let's say, a micrometer, where you're counting tenths on the, on the sleeve, you're counting quarters of tenths between the individual tenths, and then you go to a completely different component of the tool to measure the individual thousands, and then you're going back to the sleeve to measure the ten thousands. This is much more straightforward. It's not as accurate, um, but we can't use micrometers to simply measure um, variations in rotors. We can do the multi-point measuring system where we measure thickness variation, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the water, the rope is warped. Um, if you think about measuring with a micrometer, we can measure the actual thickness of the material. This dial indicator is used to measure our actual uh, warp of the rotor. You might have the same thickness all the way around a rotor, but if that surface is warped, you're never going to pick that up with a micrometer. So there's two specific tools that we need to make sure we understand. One is the micrometer, and I know we spent a lot of time working with micrometers. Um, and then we have our dial indicator. And the dial indicator is much more straightforward. It's as simple as counting um, and then just documenting the, the reading. So hope that helps. I'm going to include a couple of practice problems. And like I said, I'll also include that video that provides a uh, setup similar to the tool that we have. So I hope that helps and uh, good luck, guys.